Hi, this is Jared Plumbing, and today we're going to be installing a one-third horsepower ion duplex sump pump with battery backup. So what we're doing here is removing an old Zoller pump and installing a new ion duplex sump pump. The way the ion duplex sump pump is, is two primary pumps um, working in unison. One goes on and then the other goes on after a timely period or an amount of water uh, raises the level where it turns on. And the reason why I did not uh, keep the Zola pump in is because of the customer. The customer wanted to finish his basement and he wanted to go with something that is guaranteed. So I did my research and found out um, the best thing for his water table, seeing it's so high, is to get a, a duplex pump, uh, a pump that's alternating from one pump to the other. Remember, pull the pump out, then the check. You don't want to be splashed with a lot of water. What you see me pulling out here is a cinder block. Normally, what you will have is a brick that's about two to four inches to give that pump enough height off the ground so the sediment that comes from the groundwater, the rainwater, does not block up the pump. You always want to put some type of brick down there. But because his water table is so high, it covers his, his drain that's going into the pit uh, uh, with at least two inches, which is not normal at all. So I put the cinder block in there so it can raise it up higher and the pump don't just keep turning on and on and on. It's not meant to constantly run on and on and on. It's meant to pump out water um, at numerous times. Also, what you would like to check for is a one eighth inch hole. Uh, it's a pinhole that prevents air lockage in the system. Uh, most of the time, your newer sump pumps should have them, um, but don't worry if it don't. Um, this one does. You see me pointing exactly where it is. It is just above the cast iron pump and below the PVC pipe where the band is. And um, don't worry about it if you don't have the hole. What you can do is drill a hole yourself. Um, I would drill it just above the male adapter about two to four inches. Now I'm going to cut this PVC pipe out of the way so I can drop in my sump pump. And I'm using Menard Superior PVC cutters. Uh, this was the first time for me using those type of cutters. They were all right for the job at hand that I needed. Uh, I have tried my hand on Milwaukee's uh, automatic PVC cutters, and I like those a lot, except for you just can't cut uh, pipe outside when it's cold or when it's cold in general. But when it's nice and warm um, down where I am in the Midwest, they work very good. So now I'm going to uh, put this lid on and I decided to go with a whole new PVC lid compared to the metal lid. I wanted to have enough room for my cords as well as my pipe in any direction and it's pretty good to have. And I'm going to remove the pump now and put in a, a some type of brick I broke apart the cinder block to be able to raise that pump up off the ground like I said before you don't want that sediment to get in there it's going to get in there but you don't want a lot of sediment so you got to raise it up so that's what you see me doing now is putting the brick the cinder block in nice and evenly also don't forget to put the brick down in there so that's what you see me doing here is to making sure that I elevate that pump up. So most of the time when you buy a sump pump, you go into a Home Depot, um, you should be able to, for whatever reason, if it's to fill on you within three years, to swap that out and get a, a new one. But if you were to buy an expensive one from a supply house like a Zola or this Ion sump pump, you may have some issues returning it uh, if they find out that you voided the warranty because you forgot to put a, a brick under there because you didn't elevate the pump correctly. 
Also, thank you guys for viewing um, this sump pump install. If you like what I'm doing, uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell for to get the notification. If you don't like what I'm doing, like, subscribe, hit the bell and the notification so you can see what I'm doing. Comment. This is a two part video. This is the first part, which will have me removing of the old sump pump and installing the new. Um, what you want to do is stay tuned uh, for the second part um, where you can see me installing the battery in the inverter and making a connection to the pump. What you see me doing here is priming the piece that's coming up from the pump as well as my fittings down below. Um, I find for me and myself and how I work as a plumber is to prime all the fittings that I will use. Some people would think of it as a waste. Well, they're PVC fittings, and if you don't need them now, you're eventually going to need them. So it may have a little primer on there, and instead of keep instead of taking my fittings back to the store, I, I just keep my fittings because you never know what predicament you're going to be in when you may need a certain type of fittings. And instead of running to the store, you have it right there. It's not that expensive. So the way I'm going to make my connection from my pump to my vertical pipe going up and out of the building is first is putting the union. The way I plumb is to think of the next man or to think as if I'm going to come back. Not saying that I'm going to do a, a shoddy job and then say, oh, I have to come back and fix it. But my mindset is always to think of the next person. Nothing is meant to last forever. It will decay. It will destroy. Um, so with that in mind, what I do is I put unions in uh, at the top of the pipe. And what I'm going to do is put in a 45 offset going vertical up and out of the building. So I put unions on there. So if I, for whatever reason, need to come back or somebody needs to come back, they can take it apart and um, they still have the pump, the pipe in place. Um, just take it apart and put it back as new. Cut all the fittings and cut them the same. It's pretty simple. What you see here is a check valve. And it's very critical that when you're installing this check valve that you install it in the right direction. So you want to have the arrow point up towards the vertical pipe and that's going to go out of the building. Also, you may be wondering, why am I going on a 45 set? Why after the union, I put a 45 set? Well, the area that I am, um, what they require or what want is a 45 set instead of a 90-90 set. Uh, that is the least amount of resistance. That's what I try to practice. So if you use a 45, there's less knocking on your pipes. But once I start this up, um, there is little to no sound on this pipe whatsoever that you can't hear. Um, you can install it with a 9090 set. Maybe in other places is okay, I've seen that. But for the most part, what I try to practice, what I was taught is a 45 set. Uh, and it's less noise being made. So remember that when you're putting together PVC uh, pipe and fittings together, uh, you want to prime the pipe. Uh, what we do out here is purple primer for the most part. So when it gets inspected, they can see, okay, he cleaned the fitting and then glue. And you, what I do is twist in the fitting or the pipe and hold it there for a while uh, while it hardens up. I mean, it takes a while for it to fully harden, but this is not something that's going to be under constant water pressure. So um, normally, if it's something under constant water pressure, uh, you want to wait for a while, a little bit longer than 30 seconds. But here, I just try to hold it for about 30 seconds, um, twist it on nice and evenly, put the glue in the fitting as well as on the pipe itself. And I just hold it there for a moment and then I let go. And as I keep going, 
the the first fitting like the union will eventually dry and then the 45 and the check it eventually get really dry to the point where when it's time to fire up the system i can do that real easy because it's already had enough time to dry up hey um don't forget to like subscribe to comment it's very important just to hear what people think and say whether it's negative or positive i appreciate every view it means a lot to me and i hope with this channel to grow this company that i'm having to something bigger now what you see me getting ready to do is put a ball valve on the end of it uh, as you saw in the beginning of the video when i removed the check all that water just came out and i had no way to control it so like i said before think of the next person you're doing this for um and what I'm doing, having this ball valve in, is that when it comes time to take apart the, the pump and the check, which may fail, I'm not saying that it will, you can control the water and make sure you don't get even a drop of water on you by having this ball valve in place. All right, what you see me using is these superior PVC cutters that I got from Menards, and I will really be interested in to see what you guys use to cut PVC, uh, especially in cold environments. Um, this is my first time using uh, PVC on um, DWV pipe. Um, most of the time we are using tubing cutters and in installing cast iron and and um, copper pipe. So let me know um, in the comments, what do you guys use? It would be real helpful to see where, what brand I should go with next. Also, when you are using this primer, whether it is clear colored or purple, um, try not to use so much. You see how white the pipe is? The last thing you want to do is use way too much primer, especially purple primer, and just have it everywhere. I like to make it look neat and um, so the customer can see not only can I do the job, but it's clean, it's neat. So when they, if they want to leave it exposed, they can. Um, this customer, I know for a fact that he's going to close it off, but you just want to be able to practice this and make it look as neat as possible. Once again, I'm just holding it in place, keeping it there and make sure that I have that connection, wiping off excess primer. I got a little primer on the top and that's it. That's it. But if you notice the rest of the things, you don't see purple. Um, and the customer was very pleased to one, not have cracks and leaks all over his basement because water is coming up because this sump pump is failing, but to also just to have something that's reliable. So like I said before, this pump uh, is very quiet, but what I want to do from keeping the water from knocking or making any sound is to put this band on it. So I put a, a piece of band iron and drilled the tap con in it, the concrete itself, and what I did was just to secure it from moving, if ever. Like I said before, it doesn't. So also don't forget to tighten your unions to make sure everything, just give it a little snug, not too much. It's PVC, you don't wanna wear on it um, too much. And it has a rubber O-ring gasket in these uh, unions. So it's easy for you to just snug it up um, with a pair of wrenches. So at the end, what I do is to make sure I check that the pumps is working. So I plug it up and I hear the pipes, the empty pipes being filled up immediately. And I know that, okay, it's working. There's no leaks. And I plug the second one in and I have to make sure because once the water is filled up in the pipe, it's hard to hear this thing go. So I have to literally put my hand on it just to make sure that it's running properly. Thank you for watching my video. Like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget there's a second part to this video. So tune in for that. Uh, and the basic need for this channel that I'm trying to fulfill is to help those in need, um, whether you're a beginner or you're a pro 
that this will be a help to those who are in need of some services like this.